All right. Um, I make no secret that I believe that uh, Bill O'Reilly is a racist, spousal abusing prick uh, who names a segment of this, well, names his show the No uh, Spin Factor or whatever the hell he names it. But that's the one thing that he does do is spin all the time for his point of view, ignoring facts and arguing with everyone who disagrees with him, just like Donald Trump. So I'm going to play the segment of his interview with Donald Trump and his talking points uh, memo and basically uh, uh, refute most of the stuff that he says. Bill O'Reilly, thanks for watching us tonight. The counterattacks of Donald Trump, that is the subject of this evening's talking points memo. No matter what happens in the Trump University civil litigation, it will not, not likely have much effect on the election voters having more important things to consider than the disenchantment of a few Trump U clients. Number one, it's not a few Trump U clients. Uh, ha as uh, was indicated in the past, approximately 25% of the people uh, at one point in time had requested refunds uh, from Trump University, which they in fact did receive. Once the number of students went up above that 25% was when uh, they stopped issuing refunds uh, to the students. And that's pretty much where the basis of the uh, lawsuit started. And then you go into unscrupulous practices, etc. But the situation has put Donald Trump on the defensive. No question there is a political component to the legal action as the law firm behind the class action lawsuits often helps the Democratic Party. Now, what the hell does the law firm have to do with this being a political situation? As far as the judge is concerned. Now, if you want to say the attorneys uh, have an axe to grind with Trump and they're looking for everything under the sun to uh, go after him on. Yeah, that in fact would be proper. You could make that claim. But the problem that uh, is being hashed out in the media is not over the law firm. It's over the judge. In fact, the firm has paid Bill and Hillary Clinton a combined $675,000 for speeches since 2009, according to the website lawnews.com. That makes the legal action look like a political hit job. Okay, and that, again, could be fair as far as a law firm uh, basically finding clients in order to go after Trump. I can go along with it thus far. As it is likely, the law firm is working on contingency. So Mr. Trump is correct to be indignant and defend himself vigorously. Ah, uh, Bill, he's, he would be correct to be indignant and defend himself vigorously against the attorneys, not the judge. But part of that defense included a negative personal assessment of the judge in the case, a Mexican-American named Gonzalo Curia. He's a Mexican. We're building a wall between here and Mexico. The answer is, he is giving us very unfair rulings. Rulings that people can't even believe. So, Trump is trying to make the case that the judge is giving him unfair rulings because he's a Mexican. He was the one that inserted the judge's heritage in this. If he had left that out, he probably would have been okay, but he didn't. Immediately, an outcry arose, and not only by Trump critics. Yesterday, Newt Gingrich, who supports Trump, said the candidate was wrong to spotlight the judge's heritage. This is one of the worst mistakes Trump has made, and I think it's inexcusable. Uh, he has every right to criticize a judge, 
and he has every right to say certain decisions are right, and his attorneys can file to move the venue for the judge. If a liberal were, were to attack Justice Clarence Thomas on the grounds that he's black, we would all go crazy. Or every conservative would say it was wrong, and it was racism. And Newt Gingrich was 100% correct. Although appointed by Barack Obama, Judge Carell is no raging liberal. In fact, he's a tough guy. At one point, a Mexican drug cartel threatened to assassinate him because of his anti-drug trafficking stance. However, the Yeah, Bill, uh, but you failed to mention that he was originally appointed to the bench by Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is uh, one of your uh, super conservative uh, friends. The judge belongs to a group called San Diego La Raza Lawyers Association, which does advocacy work on behalf of Latinos. It's not associated with the radical La Raza group, but confusion is understandable. Confusion for an everyday person hearing the name would be understandable, but I thought Mr. Trump hires the best of the best to do uh, investigations for him. And if he did, he would have realized that the association that the judge used to belong to, but no longer belongs to, was not the same radical uh, group that uh, you were trying to uh, label him with. Because of that, Mr. Trump apparently believes the judge may be biased against him. He believes that the judge may be biased against him based on false, wrong information. Uh, what does that tell you about Donald Trump? What does that tell you about his people, if he even used uh, anybody that was reputable? It tells you that Donald Trump doesn't do his homework. As it is well known, the candidate has taken a strong stand against illegal immigration, include building a border wall. Summing up, the Trump U case is certainly political to some extent. And it's a very high profile situation. Be it's political because Trump used uh, his position as far as being a candidate for president to bring in a personal civil matter into the arena. No one else did that but Donald Trump. Because of that, Talking Points believes the judge should recuse himself. Not because he did anything wrong, he didn't, but to eliminate any doubt as to the motivation in court rulings. If he did nothing wrong, why is there any doubt? Why would there be any doubt about his rulings? That's ridiculous. You're basically trying to create something out of nothing. There are plenty of federal judges that could immediately step in. It is valid that some may see any recusal as caving to intimidation, but stark justice in a case this important trumps pardon upon any theoretical argument. Exactly. And that is exactly what Trump can expect from the judge, stark justice. And that's now the top story tonight. Reaction joining us from his New York City headquarters is Donald Trump. So do you regret making it personal with the judge? Look, I've had very, very unfair decisions. Uh, people said this should have gone away a long time ago in summary judgment. Uh, the defendant in the case was uh, a horror show from the other side, so they asked that the defendant get out, you know, the plaintiff. The plaintiff in the case was an absolute disaster for them. And they asked whether or not, uh, they went to the judge, they asked whether or not the plaintiff could get out of the case. I mean, she said all great things about the, about the school. She has a uh, tape of her saying great things and she has a written statement signed by her saying great things. And the judge dismissed her from the case, but left the case stand. We thought we were gonna win the case. I don't care if the judge is Mexican or not. I'm gonna do great with the Mexican people. If you didn't care whether the judge was Mexican or not, which he's not, he's American, why did you bring it up? I provide jobs, so I don't care about Mexican, but we're being treated very unfairly, Bill, very, very unfairly. Okay, so 
wouldn't it have been better then if you didn't bring up the Mexican thing at all and just said what you said here tonight? Because look, you're being sued. I understand we did analysis of your lawsuits history and you win most of your lawsuits. You're a big guy, guys are gonna come after you, you know that. So wouldn't it have been better if you just said, look, I don't think I'm being treated fairly. Here's, here's what we have and, and let the Mexican thing alone. Well, the question was asked to me, you know, I mean, all these times, every time I go, I want to talk about how... No, 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 Donald. The question was not asked of you about the judge's background, uh, his heritage. The questions may have been asked of you regarding the lawsuit, but again, nobody asked about the judge's background. You brought that up. You threw that in there. How lousy the economy is. I want to talk about how badly we're doing against ISIS, how badly we're doing on the border. But every time I go into a show, all they want to do is talk about Trump University. Now, I will say this. I think we've turned it because thousands and thousands of students have signed documents saying it was a great school, that they learned a lot. It was wonderful. They gave it high marks. I mean, I think we've turned it. So at least by talking about it, people understand it's a civil lawsuit that should have been dismissed a long time ago. But the judge is treating me very unfairly. All right. Uh, the questions were asked, and, you know, frankly, I don't even like wasting my time talking about this lawsuit. I'm going to win this lawsuit. But That's a bunch of bullshit, because every time uh, you uh, went out to one of your rallies, you immediately brought up how unfairly you're being treated in your lawsuit. You turned this from a normal civil lawsuit into a part of your political campaign. So uh, if you really didn't want to talk about it, when you were giving your stump speeches, you wouldn't have brought it up. You should win it on summary judgment. This shouldn't be a lawsuit that goes on forever. When you have thousands of students saying that the place was great, it was a great school and they loved it, this should be dismissed on summary judgment, Bill. This shouldn't be a lawsuit. Okay, now you know why people ask you about Mexican things and, and any ethnic group, Muslims, what it, whatever it may be. The strategy that you're going to use against Hillary Clinton, and correct me if I'm wrong, I can't read your mind, is that she's not suitable to be president because she's not honest. That's your strategy, right? She's not honest. She's not super. I don't even think she's capable. Look right. at her decisions. I mean, take a look at where she's gone. Every decision she's made practically, and she's made so many bad decisions, she would be a disaster as president of our country. Okay. So that's your strategy, to, to tell the voters, look, she's not honest and she's not capable. The strategy being used against you, and surely you know this, is that you don't like Muslims. You don't like women. You don't like Mexicans. Personally, you don't like them. And, and the strategy the Democratic Party is using is cleave off these groups, all right? Demonize him within these groups, and he won't have enough votes to win the presidency. That's why they're asking about the judge. Uh, uh, Bill, uh, you forgot about uh, handicapped people, and you forgot about uh, African Americans. I don't really care, they being the press, about Trump you. They don't care. But as soon as you mention Mexican or Muslim, bang, that's why they're doing it. And that's not true, Bill. Donald Trump is consistently touting how successful he is, how all of his businesses are great, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is an example of one of his businesses that apparently didn't appear to be all that great. And with a lawsuit being filed against it, obviously it's just rebutting the fact that all of his businesses are great. All right, look, number one, I have great respect for women. I was the one that really broke the glass ceiling on behalf of women more than anybody in the construction industry. And my relationship, I think, is going to end up being very good with women. Plus, they want to see a strong country that... Now, he says he believes that his relationship is going to end up being strong with women which would infer that his relationship right now with women is not all that great. I know a few rules uh, uh, and uh, strategies as far as debates are concerned as well. Secure 
and she's not going to be able to do that. Look at Benghazi. She was sleeping when the phone call came in. She did the ad on the phone call at 3 in the morning. She was sleeping. She was sound asleep or wherever she was, but she wasn't answering that call when our ambassador and the others needed help. Okay. So you take a look. So I think I'm going to do great with women. Now, with Mexico, I want a strong border. There's no question about that. And with Mexico, and I'm not talking about Mexican people. You know, I have thousands of Hispanics working for me right now, Bill, and thousands and thousands over the years, and they're great people. I'm going to bring jobs back. That's why I think I'm well, going to that, do well that's with the Hispanics. If, you, if they buy your economic program, um, you'll win. Um, but look, just, well, our country just is losing yesterday. jobs. Hey, Bill, our country is losing jobs like one after another, whether it's carrier air conditioning or Nabisco okay. or Ford. They're all moving out. They're building plants in Mexico. And I'm not knocking Mexico. I'm not even knocking the leader of Mexico and the leaders of Mexico. What I'm doing is knocking our president for being grossly incompetent. He's allowing our country. They're stealing our country from us. Okay. And we have you know, it would be nice if he would uh, mention something other than carrier air conditioning, uh, Nabisco, and Ford. I'm quite sure, as a matter of fact, I'm positive that there are other companies that uh, are attempting or are leaving the United States. And he keeps mentioning the same three companies. You would think with uh, all the money he has and uh, all the... Uh, availability of uh, research in that area that he would be able to mention more than just these three companies but it, again it's part of his uh, standard uh, stump speech so what do you expect to stop it okay now on the women front the Boston Globe yesterday um, writes that you pay men in your campaign a third more in salary than you pay women and this goes back to my theme that this is what you're going to be confronted with. Number one, is that true? Do you pay men a third more than women in your campaign? The answer is no. And I just had a check because I heard this was going to be a question. I don't know. I have a good source. And somebody said that this could be a question. I just checked it, Bill. And the answer is no. And in fact, if you look at the uh, Clinton Foundation, they pay a lot more to men than they do women. And you look at other things that she's been involved in, and frankly, surprisingly, she pays a lot more to men than she pays to women. And that's come out over the last three or four right. weeks. Now, so, uh, let me get this no. on the record, though. The Globe says that according to Federal Election Commission records from April, all right, the last month available, that this is true, that you pay women a third less than men in your campaign. Now, there could be reasons no, for that. No, people just said no. Okay. I can only go, and there are reasons, because they're different jobs, and that's what I heard. They're much different jobs, but uh, generally speaking, and if you look at my company and what I pay women versus men, in many cases, I pay women more money than I pay for men, and frankly, now I'll probably get a lawsuit from my men that work for me. <laughs> but you know what? I pay women for the same job more money than men. Why do you do so that? So I've just... Because they're very talented. When so you talented, pay on talented, your pay perception. Based on talent. So you pay salaries on based on your perception of ability. I pay on talent. I pay on, on ability. I do. I pay on ability. Yeah, that's what and I do. And in the case, I have some women that are making a lot of money, and they're making more money than men in comparable positions. But I just checked with my people on the election stuff, and they tell me that that's wrong. They're different jobs and different categories okay. and everything else. But when you end it all out, it's essentially the same. Now, he could be telling the truth. You know, I don't know. You don't know. My personal opinion is he's lying, but that's just my personal opinion. I have nothing to base that on. All right. Um, fair interview? All right. Enough with the uh, that. Now, the next day, he basically, which is uh, last night, O'Reilly uh, does a segment with uh, Charles Krauthammer, and Krauthammer is basically all over O'Reilly, and he's not hearing it. Hang on one second. I hate to say it, but I don't have that segment, so I'm going to have to end the video right here.